I was born into a family that really didn't want children. And my mother had a hard time with me. Um, I was a colicky baby and cried a lot. My father was a very violent person and um, abused me, um, didn't like the fact that I cried, got me drunk to shut me up. My feelings around being a baby was nobody picked me up and nobody loved me and nobody fed me. And I don't think that that's like the entire truth, but I think it's how that baby saw the truth, that nobody wanted me, nobody wanted this baby. And when I was seven months old, I learned how to walk. I had crawled down a flight of stairs, opened the front door, and walked out into the street. My mother was horrified and ran out and picked me up. That's when I knew I couldn't get away. And it's, it's when I knew I had to stay. And um, the, the baby that walked out into the street that tried to run away just gave up and said, it's not, I can't do it. I can't stay here. And my perception of that is that another baby came. Then another baby said, okay, I'll be Katie and I'll take your place and you can go to sleep. And that's when I started seeing that creating other personalities was a way to get out of whatever problems I was having. I started with just three and the one that grew got to be a year and a half old and she was called Little Katie. And then when my brother was born, I made more, I created more. There was one that was called Honey, but her name really was Clara. Then there was Jean. She was about four. Well, being a girl didn't work, so maybe being a boy would work. So we made a boy. There was a whole bunch of them that were like six, seven, and eight. Um, Janet and Joe and Kate. And Kate was the one, oh, and Kathy. And Kate was the one who pretty much w operated in the outside world. And it went on and on like that. And every traumatic event that happened in my life, um, I made more. And I made more people to take care of me, more people to, to be abused so that I wouldn't have to be abused. My father's goal, I think, although I don't think he ever would have have like been able to say this, but it was to have everybody um, depend on him and everybody take care of him and that everything had to go through him in order to, uh, for anything to happen. It was starting from when I was about 12. You couldn't close any doors inside the house. You couldn't wear any clothing inside the house. Um, you couldn't... This applied to your mom too? Yeah. You couldn't have any privacy of any kind. There, and that was appalling for a 12-year-old girl. That was just um, not being able to close the door in the bathroom was, I thought, I just was going to die. I didn't feel like I could have a life um, that my father didn't know about. I started a diary in 1971, November of 1971, that I still keep. And I'm very surprised I kept it because um, very early on, my father started reading it. And no matter how well I hid it, he'd find it and he'd read it. And he'd write things in it to show me that he'd read it. Um, it, it. To me, it's just boggling that I managed to keep going. But I know that I kept going because I was a multiple. Because the personality who stayed at home could cope with that. That's all she could do, she could cope with that kind of intrusive behavior. There was one of them who sort of had social life, that was Marie. And then there was the one who went home and coped with the abuse, and that was Louise. And I had a nervous breakdown because Mary came out at home and my father abused her. And she didn't have 
this inner experience. And that's when the personality that was called Mari was created, was out of that confusion. And I came in to be at the very end of my junior year of high school and had absolutely not the foggiest idea what was going on, who I was or where I came from. Or I had this idea of who I was, but let me tell you, it's so far from what reality is. Sometimes when I thought I went to sleep, I didn't. Um, I had one who, was, well, she was the first one of us to become a lesbian, and she had a lover, and I didn't know. One Christmas, a lot of them decided that they wanted to trade Christmas presents This is when we had developed a lot of cooperation, and we lived in a very little apartment, though, and um, everybody was trying to buy Christmas presents and hide them without anybody else knowing what was going on. So the adults hid them really high up, and the kids hid them really low down. If you found something in a closet that wasn't yours, you left it alone, and actually it worked pretty well. We had tons of presents under the Christmas tree, and everybody got surprised. Okay, the problem with this story is it sounds exactly like there are a lot of roommates. No, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it's not a lot of roommates. <laughs> it was all me. <laughs> it was all these 25 people inside of me who all wanted to give presents to one another.